Um, yeah, welcome to this talk. Um, title of today's presentation is going to be Improving Efficiency with Prompt Engineering. Um, and thank you for coming, first of all, and, and for taking your time here. And it's not going to be hardcore technical talk, but I believe it's going to be very important given the current situation and state what's, what's happening with large language models. Um, and the character here um, is AI generated, uh, inspired by Gordon Ramsay. And I have him because secondary topic of today's presentation is going to be cooking. cooking. Um, a few words about me. I'm Jan Ijak. I'm technical manager specializing in productionizing AI solutions. Uh, and I'm focusing on improving efficiencies of the teams. So uh, slightly different uh, field now. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I'm not that active. Later, I'll share with you LinkedIn link as well. Um, this is my hobby. It's uh, practical Montessori. I work on Henry Pintex recognition as well and technical stack. Uh, agenda, uh, welcome first. Then I'm going to talk about intro introduction to large language models and how people are using them. Then I'm going to tell you how I was inspired to start using large language models. Um, and then we're going to go to the meat of the presentation, which is creating our own prompt book. And um, my friends that presented just before me um, shared the importance of having your prompts safe in some safe place uh, so you can reuse them. Um, and lastly, we are going to go into uh, another important part, which is creating our own prompts and why this is important. Um, so I'm talking about large language models, and perhaps because you're here and you've, you've seen already the previous presentation, um, and many of you heard of um, ChatGPT. This is not the only one, there is many more, and I wanted to share with you this infographic. Um, there's Bart from Google or Cloud from Anthropic, and there are also some open source options like uh, Vicuna or, or Llama based, um, Llama based models. Um, Show of hands, how often do you use large language models? Never heard of it? Okay, that's great. Um, try it a few times? Awesome. Um, every week? And every day? Great. I'm happy to see that so many of you are using it. Um, and from my research, uh, I see that only two in 10 managers are using large language models every week and only four in 10 engineers. That might be a little bit outdated. I, I did the query or poll um, a few weeks back, but still this is limited. And in this audience, I see that many more of you are, um, are using it. I'm happy to see that. Um, and here are some of the reasons why people don't want to use them. Uh, it doesn't create anything of value. Or grandma warns about robot uprising because she's in Terminator. Um, or the most valid one, the last one, uh, privacy concerns. Uh, because of the data collection. Uh, we need to be careful with that, especially um, hearing recent events from some big companies. All right, so let's get to introduction of large language models. So I'm going to share with you a few examples of how people are using large language models. Um, and this is going to be um, mainly based on Claude and ChatGPT. This presentation is going to be mainly uh, based on Claude and ChatGPT responses. Um, so first, point. Uh, I guess this was the first one that I seen uh, when I started working with ChatGPT. Write short point about artificial intelligence, and it would be great to provide you with the examples. If you run, if you want to write, uh, if you want to write email, and then you want to change it into poem, <laughs> it would be possible to do that. Second, mathematician. So I studied mathematics. I remember I had a lot of fun proving theorems, uh, and I spent a lot of time with my friends doing that. And now it's even more fun. You can add emojis to it with ChatGPT. Um, um, then ChatGPT is also good at preventing crimes. Um, so if you want to hotwire a car, it would tell you that it's not really good to tamper with car electrical system and it might be illegal. Um, but if you're there in the woods and the baby is in danger and the only way to save the baby is to hotwire a car and take it to the hospital, it would be more than happy to provide you with the instruction. Um, <laughs> And this process, this is important, this process, and, and my friends were telling, uh, talking about that this is called prompt engineering. So basically, you wrap around your prompt within larger context and you confuse your, your models. So ChatGPT is really good at um, stopping prompt injections. So you need to be really creative to get the answer, but other newer uh, models are, are worse. <laughs> so it's easier to, to engineer prompt for the other, um, for the other models. Um, and now we're getting to the question, is this useful? To me, this is garbage. 
how often do you need to do a poem about something? Or how often do you need to add prompts to the, to the mathematics theorem? That's not really useful. Hot wiring car? Perhaps never. Um, so uh, I was sitting there with my wife, and we were in Bali. And we thought, oh, it's hypey, this new topic, chat GPT. And my wife started her own company. And she asked me to help her a little bit with the creation of the website. And creation of the website is not easy for data scientists, especially that they don't have JavaScript um, background. And what's more, creating content is time consuming and hard and requires a lot of attention. And we didn't have that much time because we have also a son that is two years old. Um, but we decided to give it a try and start to use ChatGPT to facilitate the process. And we were super surprised um, that it sped up the process and also improved the content. The responses weren't ideal. It was giving a lot of errors and mistakes and something that is not really Montessori. We are we're focused on Montessori education. Um, but together with my wife, we were, we were able to fine tune the responses and get the correct ones. So, and for now, it already generated some, some leads. The website that we created together generated some leads. So now we are sort of looking forward to generate even more. Um, and three weeks ago, we've been going to Malaysia for holidays. And now we are moving houses, and I was preparing for the conference, so we didn't have much time to plan this trip. Uh, so I asked ChatGPT for help, and it was able to provide me three day in Italy with a step by step guide what should we do. Um, it took us to some durian shops. My wife wasn't amused with that, um, but to me it was fine. Um, all right, and the next one, and I guess this one is uh, another topic that is related to the previous talk. So you, if you think about summarizing a podcast previously, um, it was a really huge project. You, need to have, you had to have some data to find your, your um, model. It was costly. You had to have engineers and perhaps some expertise. Um, so that was a huge project with a lot of unknowns. And now if you want to do the same with the use of some uh, APIs, you can test the solution very fast. And what's more, most likely the results that you're going to get from chat from GPT-3 or 4 are going to be much better than the ones that you're going to get from your uh, customly trained BERT. BERT is old uh, state-of-the-art uh, type of model. I guess it was uh, published in 2018. Um, so here we are. Um, those are a few examples how how we save time or how we manage to do uh, things faster. And what I'm saying is that you can do a lot of things that were previously time-consuming much faster. And you can um, get the results that are not ideal, uh, but you can tweak them and you can speed up a lot of processes. So what I'm saying that is you can save time by using large language models um, as your brain scaffolding. You will, you will need a replace it yet. And all of that you can do to make yourself relevant. Because I believe we are not going to have this Terminator example that I was talking about and Real Mice are afraid of, but we're going to have um, situation where people who are using AI would be competing against people who are not using AI. And I don't have to tell you who is having head start um, in that race. And what is more, lastly, um, this is not 100% accurate, but it's fairly accurate. So introducing of ChatGPT, um, to me, it's a very similar event to introducing iPhone or smartphones, because it enables a lot of previously impossible things a lot faster. So during iPhone release, we had companies such as um, Instagram or Square um, that were built on top of that. So for now, um, I see the completely new, new universe of application is going to be enabled. And already we see the trend how Microsoft is using Copilot for PowerPoint presentations or, um, or, or Word documents. We see also the same for Notion. Even on the offices using ChatGPT within their software. So yeah. I guess this is giving you good motivation um, to start your own prompt book because um, that might be relevant. But you might still question why do you need prompt book? And I give you I gave you a hint just before. Um, but basically, I'm suggesting that so then you can reuse some of the prompts that you're using often, and you don't have to recreate the wheel, reinvent the wheel multiple times. Um, how to use this presentation? From now on, this is important. I'm going to share with you some prompts and some answers. They're going to be truncated, so I'm not going to share with you everything um, uh, because I want you to focus on how things are being made. 
uh, and not each word step by step. Um, uh -huh. And I'll share the presentation after the talk, so you can copy paste some of the prompts that are sharing with you. Some of the prompts uh, were ones that I found on the internet, and I found them useful, and I keep them for myself. And some of them were invented, invented by me. All right. Um, so the power of prompt engineering. Um, this is also another answer to the question: Why do you need prompt engineering? Um, and I'm asking questions to the ChatGPT. ChatGPT answers, and everything is fine. I'll ask complete the sentence. Oh, this is Claude, by the way, uh, from Anthropic. Um, I'll ask complete the sentence. Life is like, and the answer is life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're gonna get. This is a good answer. It's answer from uh, Forrest Gump. I remember this movie when I was small and I was watching it multiple times. But it's boring. Everyone knows that. It's nothing inventive and I can create it myself. You don't have to think much to, to create this answer. So how about if we ask a um, model to behave like a Michelin star chef, so behave like a Golden Ramsey and complete that sentence. And then it would say, life is like a bad risotto. Too many people don't steer enough, don't pay enough attention to the details, and end up with the magic flavor of <laughs> uh, Yeah, and I, I, like this. I like this answer much more, um, especially if, you're, uh, if you like cooking yourself. And I'm sharing why cooking is um, secondary pro uh, secondary topic of this presentation is because cooking is much like prompt. You have your cookbook where you serve your recipes for later, and you can reuse them. And uh, you can either use some recipes that someone else created, or you can create your own. And I'm going to talk about both both of the things. So first, I'm going to show you um, a few pre-made prompts. Okay, uh, so cookbook uh, or prompt book starter. Okay, and here I'm gonna share with you only three prompts. Um, one of the things that I started to um, do more when I started to be adult is answering emails. <laughs> and my wife facing this even more often um, as she works as a teacher. Um, and if you use ChatGPT, it can give you boilerplate boilerplate message on how to reply to some email. And this is Alan asking about the um, AR, AI resources. Here's the full answer, and here's truncated answer. And it provides you, it provided um, me or, or the person who requested for that a lot of options for Jim to learn AI. Um, it's very basic. Um, you would have to still edit it, but the answer is very reasonable. You don't need to think, but you can think about um, deeper insights. And here is the template. So the template you can copy paste. Second thing, learning. Many of us want to learn new things. Um, and previously YouTube was a big thing. Um, and now I guess ChatGPT can accelerate that process as well. Um, so here is the example. I want to learn about artificial intelligence. Same topic. 20% um, of the topic that, is, that yields 80% um, of the results. Here's the full answer. Full answer was really long. It was... Um, eight sections um, covering a number of things, um, but the main thing that I wanted to share with you, it suggested basics uh, of machine learning, um, ma machine learning basics. Ah, you don't see this. There's machine learning by Andrew and G. So it suggested lots of relevant sources as well to learn in depth. Uh, this, is full, um, this is full prompt for learning. It's modified prompt that I found online. I'll share the presentation, so uh, you don't need to take photos yet. Mm. And last one, I wanted to share with you the travel prompt. Um, this was, I guess it was shared by Generative AI um, and made day by day in theory about round trip to Singapore. You can also ask about hourly in theory. Um, and I, I asked about multiple food options. It's not really great with, with providing food options, um, but I was okay with that. Full answer and truncated answer. Um, that's really cool. If you're visiting Singapore, I also, um, I also recommend you to go to Kranji. Um, you can see a lot of bird species um, and alligators there. And it's worth it. All right. Um, this is travel, uh, full prompt. And now last part. I think, why do I need to um, create prompting? What is prompting? And, and why do I need to do anything like prompt engineering? And prompting is like simply asking questions. And prompt engineering is art of asking right questions to the right people to get the right answer. And the right answer is wherever you need. 
so framework. Um, there is no single framework that is mainstream yet because prompt engineering is fairly new, um, but I decided to provide you one option for, for using it. And uh, here it is. And basically, while providing framework, I want you to focus on providing a lot of context to the chat or to other language models. Because if we provide context, um, then it will be able to answer you with relevant response. If you don't provide enough context or the context is wrong, then it's more likely to, to give you wrong results. Um, so the context that I suggest is task. So whatever you need to do. Um, second is role. So who needs to answer or to whom the answer is. Um, the third one is constraints. So what chat should do or what shouldn't do. And the last one is chain of thoughts that my friends covered or examples. Uh, so you provide even more context by showing how uh, the chat should think. Um, all right, and let's get to the example. Um, I'm hungry, it's late, and what should I do? And then when I was starting using uh, ChatGPT, I would write, what should I eat for dinner? And it was fine. It created a few ideas, and I liked the ideas. They are, they are already good. Grilled salmon, I would eat that. Chicken, I wouldn't because I'm vegetarian. Uh, vegetarian chickpea, uh, not vegetarian, pescatarian. Um, chickpea, uh, vegetarian chickpea curry, reasonable. I don't like chickpea that much, but it's still fine. Um, and now we're getting to the last example. So how, if we provide more context, um, I'm hungry, it's late, what should I do? And my girlfriend is there, and both of us, we have dietary restrictions, and I want to make it the moment that matters. So instead of asking what should I eat, I would ask to design a trick course menu um, that I can make at home. And also I will ask Gordon Ramsay or other missionaries start to design that menu for me. Um, and now about constraints, I have lactose intolerance and my girlfriend doesn't eat gluten. All right, so let's add that. And lastly, um, think about this step by step. And this is really important. This you should save. Don't answer if, you don't know, if you're not sure. Um, this reduces uh, hallucination, so-called, by much. So this is influencing the thought process. And here is the answer that I got. And I was amazed. As a mission star chef, I would be delighted to create a customized menu for you and your girlfriend. And it provided us with three course menu, with ingredients, and step-by-step -step guide on how to create them. So um, I guess this is a fairly convincing example on, on why Engineering, prompt better, uh, engineering prompts is better than just prompting randomly. Um, and then um, premium all-in-one example. So this is inception. It's not really a pre-cooked example or it's not really um, engineer example, but you can ask ChatGPT to help you engineer your future examples. And I've been using that a lot. And I asked ChatGPT on um, how to amaze uh, people joining presentation on prompt engineering. Uh, and uh, it's, it helped me in, in, creation, in creating this presentation as well. All right, so let's get to conclusion. So I'm suggesting you to start your prompt book um, and use the methods that I covered here um, to automate some tasks that you're working on and in the effect to stay relevant. Um, thank you. It was a pleasure to talk to you. And now scan. This is the uh, QR code to my LinkedIn post. And in comment, you have the, the presentation link. And for now, the presentation is still closed because I didn't want anyone to see it before the presentation. Um, and I will, I will open in, in a few minutes. OK, wonderful. Uh, so we have someone who's played extensively with prompts. And uh, your opportunity to ask him lots of questions on this. So. Oh, we still have time for questions. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so as noted in the last presentation, there's been changes with, even within the model, um, the different releases of GPT-3 and 4. Um, so when we're going to scale, how, do, yeah, how, how, what does that look like? Are you, are, um, how are you, are you, are you, since they don't explicitly reveal, reveal to us like version numbers or versioning of, of GPT-4, how are you versioning these or like controlling these, so on and so forth, logging these? So. If it comes to using this, I'm trying to be very practical and I'm trying to automate especially tasks that are time consuming and, uh, and I need to have starter code or started, start 
structured template that I can later edit and adjust to my current needs. And for that use case, it's not really, uh, it's not really problematic whether the model results are consistent or not. If I get result that is from uh, early stages of GTPT when prompt engineering works, or oh, this this might be the only problem when the prompt in, uh, not prompt engineering but prompt injection works. But for email replies, for um, learning. Uh, for learning examples or for, for designing trips or, or for boilerplate code, for debugging code, for um, user story creation, for being creative and, and finding two concepts that are unrelated at the beginning and you connect them two together. All of those examples are in the presentation, uh, in the appendix. All of those, the responses in between the models wouldn't change much. They would be good. They were good and I expect them to only be better in the future. They wouldn't block none of those use cases that are relevant. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Awesome. Yes, sure. Um, by creating prompt books, um, because there are a lot of online resources already, like for example, playground.ai has a list of prompts, right? So how do you recommend creating prompt books? Awesome. Yeah. Uh, really good question. Uh, I'm happy that you asked. So there is tons of resources, and you would be overwhelmed with them. So why I'm suggesting to create prompt book because there is lots of cooking books and you don't use them. But my wife always had a small book where she saved all the uh, recipes that she, she used often. So I'm, I'm suggesting you to create your own prompt book with the prompts that you are using and not to use generic uh, results. Because if you use generic results, you would still need to search. So I want you to save the time of search of the prompts that you need and use often. Yeah, that's, that's the uh, reason for creating your own prompt book. And you don't have to have your own prompts. That's an option. Lots of prompts that I use in the presentation are from someone else because there are lots of people who are working on that and they're creating great things. Um, yeah, this is the open source part of the talk. <laughs> right. uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's, a good, it's a big room. Um, so thanks for sharing. Uh, I have two questions. So first is that, um, as we know, is uh, the whole um, AI. I think the whole AI, large language model is able to very fast. So we're having uh, GPT four coming up, and I mean it's already there. Five is coming up, and we have other companies uh, publishing their own models. So I, 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 I believe you have to definitely play with a lot of these models. So do you find the prompts like um, consistent? Like if you feed the same prompts to different models, do they still? Uh, perform the same and because I, I like your an uh, analogy of um, like the cookbook but I mean let's say the rice that we're using have not have not changed for the past <laughs> thousand years but models are evolving very fast so do you find let's say if you have a prom book that's built using um, let's say GPT uh, 3.5 and after 4 comes up or if you're using other models do you see any inconsistency in the results in the quality of that mm -hmm. and uh, my second question is that how do you like if let's say you're using the prompts for some um, some some tasks where facts are very important and how how do you do fact checking? Yeah. Okay. Oh, awesome. Two uh, two great questions. So first consistency and then fact checking. Um, consistency between, in between the models. Um, so it's there is one great thing. Um, OpenAI have big budget and lots of people who are working on it and and they had heads right. Um, so lots of prompt injections are stopped, but other models don't do that. So you can do, you, you don't even have to do prompt injections for some models, for some newer models. Um, you can just ask how to hardwire a car and it would answer. Um, and again, similar answer to the previous one, for most of the use cases that I'm, I'm using, it's simple tasks that are time consuming. And even if the answer is slightly inconsistent between two models, it would provide you boilerplate. So you can reuse that and adjust it. Um, and then uh, fact checking is a uh, second question. So fact checking and adjustments of the results, I guess they're um, related topics. So when we were creating the website for my wife, this Montessori website, lots of responses from the chat were inaccurate and were Montessori and were, we are reading into Montessori. So, and when I said that AI wouldn't replace us, yet, and it, it's not going to be fight between people and AI, but people who are using AI versus people who are not. Um, so you still need to have an expert to validate some results. The prompt that I share with you, don't answer if you don't know, it works to some extent, but sometimes chat would make up things anyways. 
and less powerful chats would make up more things than the other ones. So just be practical, use it to your needs, and don't go for the, I don't know, for people who are shouting, oh no, this, is, this created something that is incorrect. That's fine, it created, just take that into account and use it to the fullest. And don't lose your time on complaining that something is not ideal. And if you don't have expertise, find someone who has expertise and can validate this. And, and what you can do, you can ask ChatGPT, hey, how, how should we learn about AI? And then it would give you boilerplate, and you ask someone, some of your friends who is AI, mm, hey, I was thinking about learning AI, I have these ideas, what do you think, what should I add, what should I take out? And then it's much better than asking, oh, what should I learn about AI? Like, you're more specific with your questions to people who are experts, and then you're not wasting their time, and you're not asking them to, I mean, not really, I'm, it's not about wasting time, but it's like you're being more proactive then uh, with, with answering more directed questions. Cool. So this is about uh, fine-tuning and experts. Uh, any more questions? Really valid points. Maybe also a question of how we measure productivity going forward, especially where <laughs> people are uh, AI-assisted. Um, so, very, very interesting question around the prompts for different models. Yeah. Still open to the floor. We've got two more minutes before we bring up our next speaker. Right. Or of course, Jan will be around to yeah. take the conversation um, offline. Happy to answer more questions. Yes, please. It's okay, so it's better because people would hear. Okay, uh, this is coming more from the text to image uh, side of things, uh, because um, uh, but it applies to uh, ChatGPT basically. But uh, so what's happening with uh, text to image is that uh, image uh, there's a lot of copyright issues coming up because uh, when uh, text to image things like you know image do you generate an image is it copyrightable? What are the problems with Training. Uh, are we seeing the same issues popping up with Chat GPT type, you know, text to text kind of pro uh, uh, models? Uh, I mean, I, I believe yes. I believe there are even some legal actions related to that uh, to to slow down uh, OpenAI. Um, but I would need to double check. Uh, I would need to double check what's the current state of that, um, and. I see some of the open source uh, large language models um, who would use only open uh, open licenses to train their models. For uh, for some closed source, you don't know what the models are trained on, and they, then they are not transparent. For for open source, you you see that, and also open source uh, models would allow you to opt out from like if you're sharing your code on github or whatever with open license you can opt out from model training um but yeah so this is for open source and then for closed source yeah i would i would need to double check what is the current situation and i think i think that there might be some 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 legal actions similar to to what's happening with the text to image um, but yeah we'll see <laughs> Round of applause.